Hello, my friends. I have a book for you that I want to read and it's called Dooley and the Snort Snoot. And I've never read this book either, so it'll be fun to read it together. It's by Jack Kent. Dooley and the Snort Snoot by Jack Kent. There was once a family of giants. The father giant was taller than a two-story building. The mother giant was almost that tall. And they had a son named Dooley, who wasn't any bigger than you. Dooley's little. Now, while your size is just right for you, it's a bit small for a giant. Dooley's mother and father worried about him. Mother said, eat your vegetables, Dooley, so you'll grow big and strong like your father. But it was plain to see that it was going to take an awful lot of vegetables. Dooley did as he was told, but nothing seemed to help. He never got any bigger. I'll always be little, said Dooley, and he started to cry. Little or big, you're still a giant, father reminded him, and giants don't cry. Giants are brave. It's hard to be brave when you're not very big, but father was right. Dooley was a giant, whatever his size. One of the things that giants do is say fee, fi, fo, fum at people and scare them half out of their wits. This makes you the giant feel important. And when you feel important, you feel big. He's telling his dog fee, fi, fo, fum. So one day Dooley went into the village to scare somebody. The first person Dooley saw was a little girl named Trina. Dooley stood on tiptoe to make himself as tall as he could, made a scowly face, and said, Fee, fi, fo, fum. Trina giggled. She wasn't very scared, was she? I'm a giant, Dooley declared. Not a very scary one, said Trina. Then, quite suddenly, she shouted, Fee, fi, fo, fum. Dooley was so startled, he jumped a foot. That's the way to do it, said Trina. Some other children came over to ask what was going on. We're being giants, Trina explained. So all the children who had been wondering what to play next anyway, went around on their tiptoes saying, fee, fi, fo, fum. And Dooley had to admit that most of them did it better than he could. After a while, they got tired of being giants and played tag instead. Dooley was it most of the time. Dooley went into the village and played with the other children quite often after that. He enjoyed their company, but he wasn't very good at games. When they played baseball, he was the first one out. When they ran a race, he was the last one in. And when they played hide and go seek, Dooley was always the first one found. Look at him. He's struggling to catch up to him. He did the best he could though, and it was fun, even if he didn't ever win. But every once in a while, Dooley would remember that he was a giant, and giants like to feel important. So he would say, fee, fi, fo, fum. The children would look up from their games and say, not bad, Dooley, keep trying. Who wants to play blind man's bluff? But Dooley couldn't help but feel discouraged. He wants to feel important too. One day their play was interrupted by an awful snarling and snorting. From around the corner came the terrible snarly snort snoot who eats little children for lunch. He was gnashing his teeth and thrashing his tail and breathing fire. He was a terrible sight to see. The children turned and ran with the snort snoot snarling at their heels. Looks like a lion dragon, doesn't he? Poor little Trina tripped on a rock and fell down, and with two snorts and a snarl, the snort snoot leaped and caught her. He licked his lips and got ready to eat her. We've got to save Trina, shouted Dooley. How can we? asked the other children, quivering with fear. <laughs> Put a little salt on her. <laughs> Dooley didn't know. He was just as frightened as they were, but he ran towards the snort snoot, determined to do the best he could. He looked at the snort snoot's fierce claws and shivered. He looked at the snort snoot's wicked teeth and quaked. He looked at the snort snoot's, oh, then he took a deep breath 
and stomped on the monster's tail. The snort snoot gave a bellow and dropped Trina. Look at him being so brave. He scowled a terrible scowl and he growled a terrible growl as he turned and went after Dooley. One lunch was as good as another. He ate Dooley instead of Trina. Dooley started to run, but then he remembered that he was a giant. And giants are brave. Giants don't run from snort snoots, no matter how snarly. So Dooley stopped running and stood very still. The snort snoot opened his mouth to gobble Dooley whole. Then all of a sudden, Dooley said, fee, fi, fo, fum, right in the monster's face. The snort snoot was so surprised he forgot to gobble. Then he remembered and opened his mouth again to swallow Dooley, but something remarkable happened. Dooley had grown almost a foot taller. So much the better, thought the snort snoot. He'll make a bigger lunch for me. And the snort snoot opened his mouth wider. Fee, fi, fo, fum, said Dooley again, and he grew another foot. The snort snoot opened his mouth as wide as he could, but Dooley was growing too fast. Look at him, he's growing so tall. Fee, said Dooley, and he grew three more feet. Fi, said Dooley, and grew four more. Fo, said Dooley, and there was no longer any doubt that, that Dooley was a giant. By the time he reached Fum, Dooley was so big he could have swallowed the snort snoot. The snort snoot, who wasn't feeling very snarly anymore or hungry either, turned and ran and was never heard of again. Nobody knew for sure what made Dooley grow. His mother said it was because he ate his vegetables, and no doubt that helped. I think, said Dooley's father, it was because he did a very big thing. I think I just grew up because it was time to, said Dooley modestly. Anyway, said Trina, you were very brave. Come on, Dooley, let's play King of the Mountain. You can be the king. And that's the end. It's a story about being brave, right? Sticking up for your friends. <laughs>